Hello, welcome to the phone show, 72. It's also the Christmas show, so happy Christmas. A reminder that we shoot this show on phones, on smartphones, on their cameras, just to show you how far multimedia and video capture has come on these devices, as well as all the other smartphone functions and features. Um, 8 megapixel cameras, um, 2009 will become de rigueur, um, maybe even 12 megapixels. Uh, video capture certainly well beyond VGA by the end of the year. I would hope so in a couple of the flagship models. We've also got OLED screens coming to the fore in 2009, brighter and lower power. We've also got the battle of the touch screens, things like Nokia's 5800 Express Music and N97. We've got the Apple iPhone or whatever they come up with, plus stuff from the Android and Windows Mobile world, of course. How far will touch go in 2009? Whatever happens, it's going to be exciting, so hang in there. Google Maps, already reported as having put Street View into its iPhone version, has now put this into the S60 and Windows Mobile versions too. Here we see Street View in action in Google Maps 2.3 on the Nokia N95 8GB, showing an area I know quite well in France. Uh, note that many countries, including the UK, are still not covered. Wikipedia, the reference site that has already spawned a thousand unofficial mobile versions, has now launched its own 100% official mobile site at mobile.wikipedia.org. Definitely one for your permanent on-device bookmarks. For the first time, the hugely respected BBC World Service in English and the BBC World Service's 24-hour rolling news in English, plus their Arabic news, are now available through Nokia's free internet radio application following an agreement with BBC and Nokia. The stations are available for live streaming 24 hours a day, so go download. Microsoft's first app for the iPhone's App Store is worth checking out as it's both free and hugely impressive. Essentially a, a demo of their Sea Dragon Deep Zoom graphics technology, you get to, for example, zoom into minute details and documents in the US Library of Congress, shown here, or, or into a, s a single huge aerial canvas of the world. Over the last six months I've been investigating various aspects of phone cameras over on All About Symbian in an article series, but just in case you haven't been following it I thought you might appreciate a quick summary of my findings. Firstly, I was investigating the exposed camera glass on most phones. How badly do everyday scuffs and scratches affect photo quality? Surprisingly, I concluded that unless you're very picky or shooting into the sun, in which case you'll see flare effects as the light gets diffused by the scratches, there's not much to worry about. The camera is focusing on a point way beyond the, the surface glass, so all the scratches do is reduce the light levels and quality by a tiny amount. Secondly, I wanted to look at the pros and cons of LED versus Xenon flash. Here's the difference between single LED flash on the N95, dual LED on the N79, and Xenon flash on the N82. Quite dramatic. As Xenon flashes are also far faster, as you can see here. Note the crispness of the N82 freeze frame, and then look at the blur on this LED flashed version from the Nokia N95. On the downside, Xenon Flash is more expensive to build in, uses more battery power and can't be used as a video light. So very much your call as to whether to make it a must-have feature. Thirdly, you've all heard the phrase, the megapixel myth, but clearly more megapixels are usually better at the same time. So where's the sweet spot for a phone-based camera? Here's the same photo taken with an 8 megapixel, a 5 megapixel and a 3 megapixel phone camera. Can you tell which is which? It's tricky, isn't it, when faced with a simple snapshot, even with a degree of zooming in. For printing purposes, even allowing for cropping slightly, there's no practical benefit in going above 5 megapixels, and arguably not even beyond 3. Finally, I wanted to look at optics and sensor hardware. These make a much bigger difference than a simple megapixel count. For example, here's a 3 megapixel image from the Nokia N93 with Carl Zeiss Optics. Here's the same image on the HTC Touch Pro with ostensibly similar camera huge difference. I've even gone into detail on the pros and cons of optical zoom in phone cameras but I've run out of time here. See the AAS features for the lowdown. One of the worries I had looking ahead to this, the Nokia 5800 Express Music and S60 5th edition was the speed of access to things like YouTube for example. There's no dedicated S60 5th edition YouTube client yet but here I'm browsing the full YouTube, that's the desktop version, uh, on S60 
fifth edition web, entering a search string, uh, looking for matches. I'm showing this in real time, by the way, uh, barring a couple of technical glitches. Uh, complete real time so you can see how fast or how slow the experience is. So again, these are the full YouTube pages, each of which is uh, two or three megabytes worth of code, JavaScript and Flash, um, all being rendered on the 5800 Express Music. As you can see, just the, the act of loading in three megabytes of code and, and rendering it takes a few seconds, uh, but probably not that much longer than buffering uh, YouTube streams on a dedicated client on another platform. Once the flashlight's kicked in and uh, sh starting to show the video content, clicking on the video then brings it up in, in a full screen mode, which is quite handy. There we go. And then you can uh, process the seek bar by tapping along it, waiting for it to rebuffer, and then you're off and running with full audio and video. And the experience is pretty good. The quality is good. Having sworn not to look at Windows Mobile from HTC again until version 7, I guess I should have known better than to take on the Omnia from Samsung. But in the interest of keeping things brief, here are the highlights. Samsung have added not one, but two extras to the Omnia's interface, a widget-based home screen, pretty but limited in functionality, plus a finger-friendly couple of panels of shortcuts, billed as the main menu. Bizarrely, some principal applications aren't on either panel, whilst others are on twice, and getting to the second panel needs divine inspiration. OK, swiping down from the top. Touch player replacing Windows Mobile player is representative of all that I hate in this current mixed-up Windows Mobile world. The built-in application works far better and is far more compatible. Features shouldn't be replaced by inferior items, no matter how finger-friendly they are. Uh, under the hood, it's bog-standard, stylus-centric Windows Mobile 6.1 uh, once you get past the Samsung silliness, but there's nothing earth-shattering here. The 5 megapixel camera takes good photos, but its attempt at capturing VGA video is spoilt by absolutely atrocious audio quality. There were the usual litany of Windows Mobile glitches, of course. Build quality is generally good, but to be honest, apart from better photo stills, the Omnia doesn't do anything that a second-hand two-year-old Windows Mobile device wouldn't do, at a fraction of the price. OK, so I wanted to take a quick look at the Android Marketplace, which is Doodle's equivalent to the iPhone App Store. OK, so here we go. As you can see at the top is a list of uh, featured applications presented in a kind of carousel. So one is MySpace Mobile. Let's check that out. Again, it's asking do I want to install the app? Um, and as you can see, there's a short description along with comments and ratings for the app. So let's go ahead and install it. OK, and it's now telling me what permissions the application needs. So in this case it needs access to the internet and also access to the phone's camera, presumably for taking photos and uploading to MySpace or from, uh, from the Google phone. OK. Yep, we'll give it permission. OK, so now it's now downloading the app in the background. Meanwhile, I can carry on browsing the store. Or I could return um, to do anything else I want to do on the phone. And if you notice at the top now, is an indication that the app's downloading. And I can swipe down and see how that's going on. And there we go. It's the download is complete for MySpace Mobile. It's now installing it. And I can open the app. And there we go. MySpace Mobile running on the T-Mobile G1, downloaded from the Android Marketplace.